Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you what you need to know about customizing and looking up key bindings or keyboard shortcuts inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you want to find all of the keyboard shortcuts, you can go up to the DaVinci Resolve menu in the top left, and it is going to be the second item here, keyboard customization. There's also a hotkey combination to get into this, which is hitting Control, Alt, and K at the same time. So either way you get in, it's going to pop up this keyboard customization menu. So you can see in the bottom right hand panel that all of your keystrokes or key bindings are going to be listed here. And you can spend a lot of time scrolling through here to see all of the different key bindings. Some are specific to certain pages like Fairlight and then others are more universal. One thing to note is that in DaVinci Resolve, you can use either the DaVinci Resolve default key bindings, but if instead you're more used to another program such as Adobe Premiere, you can go in here, click on the top right hand corner drop down menu, and you can switch to other popular programs. So you see uh, Adobe Premiere Pro here, Final Cut Pro as well, and Avid Media Composer, three really big names in video editing. So you can switch to have the key bindings that would be associated with those programs just by using one of these other presets. Or, or if you prefer, you can just stick to the DaVinci Resolve default presets. So you may also notice from this drop down menu that at the bottom here, I have two custom key binding sets uh, that I have saved to Resolve and I can use while I'm editing my videos. So as you make changes to your key bindings in Resolve, you may want to set that as a template that you can always load and switch between. So when you have your custom changes made, you can go to the top right hand corner and do save as a new preset. You can also import preset files and export them. So if you save the new preset, it'll show up in the menu and you can switch to it anytime you need. And also you can import and export preset files if you need to use the same key bindings on another computer. So when you want to create a new key binding for a specific command, one decent idea is to look up what the command is in the area that you normally click on it manually. So for instance, if I was to come down here to this area where we have disable video track, looking at the names of the tooltips is usually a pretty good way of finding what that same setting would be called in the key bindings. So if I go up to the DaVinci Resolve menu in the top left here and I go to keyboard customization here, uh, I could type in the key, I could type in the keyword video here and I'd probably be able to find that same function. So here we can see enable disable video tracks. That's pretty much what we'd be looking for. If I click here, we can see enable disable all video. But we might notice that distinctively disabling individual tracks isn't listed here. So we might try one of the other keywords. So I'm going to actually change the video up here to disable as a way to try to find it. And we can see enable disable video tracks here it lists the rest of the commands now. So we have enable or disable video one, video two, and so on and so forth. So just by searching through the menu, we can find the already set up default key bindings for things. And if we want to add a new key binding, we can hit the plus sign over here. Of course, to remove existing key bindings, you just click on the X for a pre-existing key binding. So if I hit the plus, I get a new box for the key binding and while it's selected with the orange box, I just need to put in the key combination in order to make that same function happen. So just for the sake of argument, I'll do Alt and then zero on the keyboard in order to set up this key binding. And when that's in, then you'll see it appear right here. So when you have your key binding set and you wanna commit it, you can just go ahead and hit save here in the bottom right hand corner. And so we have our second key binding. Another way that you can find unused keys or to see what each key does is to look at this keyboard layout at the top. So if you click on a key, then you'll be able to see what this active key does depending on which window you're in. So the application will be the default, but then that same key might have a specific use in other areas such as the project manager or the Fairlight timeline or the edit timeline since of course each of those pages are going to have different functions. Whenever you click on one key like a letter, you can also add in shift or control or alt or even all three of them 
And then you'd also be able to see all of the key bindings for that specific key combination. So obviously, if you throw in more of Control Shift and Alt, then there's going to be a lot more free space available. Though that would end up being a little bit trickier to use and, and possibly a harder combination to remember in general if you need to press three keys in order to get the same result. So if you ever run into the situation where you already have two key bindings or maybe even one and this keystroke column is too small for you, you can actually go over to the right side and if you hover over it right around here, you're going to get this indicator where you can actually stretch the column and expand it more towards the left. So this may overlap the command area a bit, but what this allows you to do is to actually add more key bindings. And so this time I might go up here to the keyboard thing. So this time I might go up here to the keyboard layout and pick a couple keys that aren't assigned yet, and then I can assign it to this task. So now that I've picked one out, I'm just gonna press those same keys. So shift and the little apostrophe key. I gotta make sure I left click on the box again. So shift and then apostrophe. Okay, we have it back in. And uh, there's even room to spare here. The keystroke column is very large, so we can still see that plus icon. I can't imagine you needing more than three, but you can always push this a little bit more to the left if you have to. So if you just made a bunch of changes and one of them you didn't like, but you haven't hit save yet, then you can actually click on this menu here and go to modified to see keys that you've set but haven't saved yet. So you can come in here and delete the key bindings that you no longer need. Uh, as you can see there, the as you can see there, the command disappeared entirely because I removed the only modified key binding. So the rest are the originals, and that's why it disappeared from this list. So coming out of the keyboard customization menu now, uh, one other place that you can, of course, easily find what the key bindings that are currently set for a lot of the resolve functions you're going to need while you're editing is the menu up on top. So for instance, if we go into the edit menu, you can see the key bindings that are associated with a lot of the really common edits that you're going to need to use. So a lot of the key bindings you'd find in this specific menu are pretty generic to office software in general. So you have your undo, your redo, cut, copy and paste, or a little bit more specific to video editing, you'd have a ripple delete, which removes the selected clip or selected clips. And then it removes the black space that would be created by removing that clip and takes all of the clips in the future and smushes them together so that there's no more black space, basically saving you an extra step so you don't have to move any of the other clips because it's automatic. And then if you go to other menus, you'll find more niche tools for uh, editing in DaVinci Resolve. So these are just really good menus for finding key bindings as well. But once again, if you remember the name of the function, but you just don't remember where it's located in these menus, then going to DaVinci Resolve Keyboard Customization, and then just searching it here with uh, the best keywords you can remember, like maybe Blade for the Blade Edit Mode, is probably the quickest way you can find it if you don't know where to find it in the menus. So that's pretty much it for how you can find and edit key bindings inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I've been Chris. I hope all of you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my future video content.